Maine Golf and Country Club, Bossonar Holland. A windswept lynx tucked between the dunes near The Hague, one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world. A match over 18 holes between Holland's greatest golfer, Jerry DeWitt, an 11 times professional champion here in the Netherlands, and one of the all time outstanding golfers of Europe. And Byron Nelson, former National Open and Professional Golfers Association champion, winner of the Masters Tournament, and one of the game's great tacticians. To take you through the match shot by shot, the legendary Gene Sarazen, winner of every major title in golf. I'm George Rogers on the scene here at Bassanar, and this is Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, a series of international matches played on the world's most famous golf courses. This week, the Hague Golf and Country Club, Bassanar Holland. The Hague, an overgrown village of 600,000 people that ranks as one of the most international cities on earth. A metropolis where it is the rule, not the exception, for people to think in two or more languages. The Hague is the capital of the Netherlands in everything but name. Parliament meets here, and Queen Juliana, who lives in nearby Utrecht, not Amsterdam, which is the real capital, maintains a residence in The Hague. In many ways, post-war The Hague reminds you of pre-war Washington, D.C. It's a city with breathing space, given it by dozens of public parks, and wide areas reserved for statues of national heroes. It is a city of architectural grandeur, such as the Peace Palace, donated in 1903 by Andrew Carnegie to house the International Court of Justice. Small but elegant museums like the Moritz House. It is a city of smart shops, specializing in china, silverware, chocolates, diamond jewelry. Embassies are everywhere. One of every 10 citizens of The Hague is employed by the government. An equal number work for foreign governments. And still another 10% work in the offices of the many industrial firms that make their international headquarters in Schrabenhaga, as the city is called in Dutch. For relaxation, they use the nearby beach at Schreveninga, to which they pour by the thousands on weekends and holidays. Here, the cosmopolitan formality of The Hague is relaxed. Doing nothing becomes the order of the day. For the more energetic, horseback riding over the nearby dunes is popular. The Dutch are some of the most avid horsemen you run into. Farther out on the dunes lies the impressive links of the Hague Golf and Country Club. Golf is not a major sport in land-scarce Holland, which has more people per square mile than America would if everybody in the world lived in the United States. But golf is an old sport in Holland. In fact, some historians claim that golf actually originated in Holland, not in Scotland, with a game called Kalt, which has been played indoors and out in the Netherlands for more centuries than anyone can actually trace. To support this theory, there is an etching by Rembrandt dated 1654, popularly referred to by collectors as the golfer. A copy is on display at the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, which houses the world's largest collection of works by that 17th century Dutch genius. Whatever the origins of golf, Dutch or Scottish, the game is obviously played with enthusiasm at the Hague Golf and Country Club, which boasts nearly 1,200 members. The club has become a social melting pot for the international set of the Hague. To tell you something about the club and Dutch golf, is the president of the Netherlands Golf Association, a member of The Hague, here Willem Schnuck Bergwijn. Golf was first played in the Netherlands at The Hague Golf Club in 85, shortly before the game was started in America. My father was one of the pioneers of the game in this country, and he and a few others used to form a strong side in Europe. Over 4,000 people in, in Holland play on 18 different courses, soon 19. And I dare to say that at least five of them are first-class championship courses. And I think that the one in The Hague is the biggest challenge of them all. 
Gene, this practice range is about the first piece of flat land I've seen here at the Hague yet. Sure is, George. This is the Pine Valley of Europe, the toughest test I've ever seen. Well, the score here, you'd sure have to have all the shots, but we have two really polished professionals in our match. Polished is right. Take, for instance, Brian Nelson's there. I've seen him for 25 years. That swing of his hasn't changed. You know, he has wonderful hands, strong forearms, and boy, he can hit that ball. You mentioned Byron's hands. They just remind me of two great big bunches of carrots. <laughs> Gene, what would you say is the key to Jerry DeWitt's swing? Well, George, when I judge a player, I look for two places, the hands and the top of the swing, and Jerry looks good at both. Well, I think they ought to just about have the wrinkles ironed out of those swings. Byron, I guess it's a little bit easier standing out here punching out iron shots instead of punching the cattle back on the ranch, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that, George. And speaking of ranches, this is quite a ranch itself. You know, the antelope would have a difficult job standing up out here on this course. Need five legs. Need five legs, is right. <laughs> Jerry, how about you? You have any trouble standing on your feet around here? No, I'm used to it. I was a pro here for three years. Well, I want to wish you luck. Thank you very much, Gene. Thank you very much. Best of luck to you, fellas. Gene, you just don't uh, find golf courses like this very often back in the States, do you? No, that's right. It's going to be very interesting to see these two players adjust themselves today. Well, the conditions here are considerably different from what they are in the United States. Uh, back there, the term links has become a popular synonym for any acreage on which a golf course has been built. But strictly speaking, a links is a type of golf course. Not many people know that, George. Well, I'd say the Hague is a classic example of that type. Windswept dunes of sandy soil deposited by centuries of receding tides. Two-thirds of the course is rough, and carved out of the rough are serpentine fairways which heave and swell, making a level stance anywhere very unlikely. The vegetation in the rough is gorse, a wiry bush that seems to have been expressly designed by nature to imprison golf balls. All but hidden from the rough are postage stamp tees, far removed from the fairways. In some cases, they're separated from the beginning of the fairway by as much as 200 yards of sand and bramble bushes. On almost every hole, the tee is isolated from the fairway. Well, Gene, here on the first tee of the Hague Golf and Country Club, we're ready for our match to begin. The attractive blonde young lady in the V-neck sweater is Mrs. Gary Driehausen, the wife of a tulip bulb exporter, member of the National Dutch Women's Golf Team and our official scorekeeper today. She is chatting with Mr. Ergroenia, whom you met moments ago, president of the Netherlands Golf Association, and with uh, Hans von Spondermann, who is vice president of the association. The gentleman in the crested blazer is here, Tony Grosskamp, himself quite a fine amateur golfer, a member here, and our referee today. He is uh, chatting with Mr. A.P. von Merrigan, who is a member of the golf committee of the Hague Golf and Country Club. And here they are, Byron Nelson in the white cap, Jerry DeWitt in the visor. They're now going over. They will meet with Mr. Grosskamp, and he will explain the rules to them. This match will be over 18 holes, metal play, according to the compatible rules of the United States Golf Association and the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland. Prize money, $5,000. $3,000 to the winner, $2,000 to the loser, and in the event of a tie, total prize money will be split. Both players, by the way, will be using the smaller British ball, which is six hundredths of an inch less in diameter than the American ball, though both weigh exactly the same. There's the toss of the coin. It is tails, and the toss of the coin has been won by Jerry DeWitt, who wishes Byron Nelson the best of luck, and Mr. DeWitt will drive first. This first hole is an unusually strong starting hole. From an elevated tee, it flies right into the midst of the dunes, which form the principal hazards at the Hague. At 466 yards, it ranks as the longest par four on the course. Okay, Gene. This is a wonderful starting hole. Partly downhill, the ground is speeded up, and there's a slight breeze in back of them. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see both of these players reach this long hole in two today. The match is underway, and Jerry Witt has hit that tee shot right on the nose. Straight down the middle of the fairway. He's out there about 235 yards. And here's Byron Nelson. It's wonderful to see him. He's been such a great player all these years. Sure is, Gene. Here in front of us is one of the truly...